Hello. What to sow in May? I'm Liz Zorab and this is By the Farm. Just as there was in April, uh, there's a lot of seeds that you can sow in May. Once again, I'll start by reminding you that you'll need to adjust your sowing times according to where you live. So the further north and the further, uh, further high up in altitude that you live, uh, the more you'll want to push these sowing times uh, towards the back of the month. But if you live in the south or in a very mild climate, you can sow these seeds towards the beginning of May. I'll look at what seeds you can plant in May uh, by groups uh, and I'll start with brassicas. Uh, so kohlrabi, uh, swedes, uh, which are rutabaker uh, in other areas, uh, kale, um, I use this for a salad. So uh, this is a red Russian kale uh, and I just picked very young leaves and they are absolutely great in salads, but you can let them grow on uh, and have them as, uh, as a green, uh, like a cabbage uh, or a collard. Cauliflowers can be sown. Uh, this is that lovely green one called Romanescu, but I'm also doing uh, a purpley one called Fialetto. And of course, there are the standard uh, white ball cauliflowers that can be sown now too. If you didn't sow them earlier in the year, uh, you can get in a sprite in broccoli now. Uh, so this is um, an early purple one. So that's a purple sprite in broccoli, which we've only just finished harvesting uh, the seeds that were sown this time last year. You can sow beet leaves, uh, and I sow these about once every month to every six weeks uh, throughout the spring and summer uh, to give me a fresh supply of very young leaves uh, because I like them in salads as well as in stir fries. And there's a selection of Chinese leaves uh, like Chinese kale or, or Chinese cabbage and also something like a very rapid uh, broccoli. Uh, broccoli rab, 60 days, uh, so it's in and it's out again uh, within 60 to 70 days. Uh, it's a really nice quick turnaround and to give you something different in your cooking. And it's certainly not too late to sow cabbages now. I'm not sowing any more until the end of the month when I will sow a few more uh, red cabbage so that we have uh, a second harvest of them uh, later into the autumn. There's a whole selection of root vegetables that you can sow now. So carrots, turnips, parsnips, beetroot, and there's radishes. This is uh, the kind of what I call a standard, almost Peter Rabbit uh, radish with a, a red, uh, red body and uh, white at the end. Uh, but I'm also trying a pure white radish uh, and a really nice red one, uh, called Cherry Bell there, uh, which is a globe one. So I'm trying that. And I'm also going to grow some muli, which is a Japanese radish. It's larger than a standard radish. It's also slightly more fiery. Uh, and I don't like this uh, just to eat in a salad or anything, but I tried it grated, uh, mixed with a little bit of yogurt, and it made a really nice alternative to horseradish sauce. And there's also salsify, uh, which is worth growing uh, for its beautiful flowers alone. Although I have to say, ours has seeded itself all over our garden. So we have salsify where I wasn't necessarily expecting it, but it's actually very pretty. So I'm going to leave it there and then I can harvest the roots at the end of the summer. And you can also sow uh, root parsley. So that's something like Hamburg parsley. Uh, this one's called Attica root parsley. Um, but those are absolutely great because you can use the leaves uh, all summer and then uh, in the autumn and winter, you can then harvest the roots as well. They've got a very mild parsley taste and we've come to really like them uh, in a tray of mixed root vegetables. In May, you can sow seeds of perennial vegetables. Uh, so I'm going to be starting off uh, some more artichokes, but you could also try cardoons or asparagus or any other of the perennial vegetables. And uh, I'm really keen on perennial veg. And if you haven't seen uh, my videos about perennial vegetables, uh, I'll leave some links uh, in the video description. And you can see uh, some of the perennial vegetables that we're growing here. Herbs and salads can be grown now. So I've got uh, basil, and uh, coriander and I'll be sowing those on a regular basis throughout the year to keep a continuous supply of young leaves and then things like lettuces, spring onions, uh, your radishes again and don't forget things like uh, cress and mustard cress uh, which you can just grow uh, on your windowsill in a small tray or a saucer um, 
on some cotton wool or damp tissue paper and you'll have the very young plants in about 10 to 12 days uh, which you just cut off uh, and use in things like egg mayonnaise sandwiches. I'm going to be sowing some more spinach and I'll be sowing that uh, in a bed that isn't in full sun. Spinach wilts and then bolts and goes to seed uh, if it gets too hot uh, so I try to keep it in a shadier bed to keep the temperature down on it a little bit and then hopefully I can eke out the season uh, of the spinach just for a little bit longer. I'm excited about these uh, this is sweet corn so now May is the month to plant your sweet corn I've heard of a couple of different methods of sowing uh, sweet corn uh, I know Erica over at Erica's Little Welsh Garden uh, soaks her sweet corn for 24 hours uh, in water before she sows it. I don't, I put mine straight into compost, uh, give it a good water, make sure it doesn't dry out. The important thing with sweet corn is that it does need some warmth to germinate. Uh, so it likes about 18 degrees C uh, or warmer. And once it's germinated, then it can be in a cooler temperature. So I'll be sowing mine into trays of compost. I'm going to take them into the house, keep them in the house just to they germinate and then I'll bring them back out into uh, the unheated polytunnel. You can find a list of all the plants and all the varieties that we're growing on our website bythefarm.com and I'll leave a link to that in the video description too. And it's also time to start sowing beans. Uh, so I will be sowing uh, a few runner beans. Now I grow my runner beans as perennials uh, because we're in a very mild area and um, so in the uh, autumn I just cut them off. I leave about uh, four to six inches of the stem uh, intact and leave the roots in the ground. And the next year, hopefully, uh, most of them will grow back. But I do uh, sow a few extras just in case there are any that didn't make it through the winter and then I can get those straight into the ground uh, to replace any that don't grow. And French beans can be sown now though. So that's both uh, dwarf uh, French beans uh, and also climbing ones. So. Uh, that lovely yellow one is a variety called Senesta, uh, but I'm also growing a, a climbing bean, a climbing French bean, and that one's called Necker Gold, uh, and I have just sown these uh, in the last couple of days. Uh, so hopefully uh, by the end of the month I will be able to get those outside. Peas can be sown direct into the ground. You can sow them uh, into uh, compost, into guttering if you want to, but at this time of year they should be uh, absolutely fine to go straight into the ground. There are lots of other seeds that you can sow at this time of year. Uh, most seed packets have a guide on the back of them that will give you some sort of uh, vague guidance of when they can go into the ground. And the last group of seeds, but absolutely by no means the least. In fact, they're probably the biggest of the plants that we grow are the cucumbers, uh, squashes and pumpkins. Now is a really good time to start those off. Uh, we are growing several different varieties this year, including butternut squash, uh, Waltham and Hunter. My very favourite jumbo pink banana squashes, which produce uh, these absolutely enormous fruits, which we really like. The spaghetti squash, uchiki kiri squash, and I'm trying several others. I'm trying one uh, new to us this year called honey boat, which is supposed to be even sweeter than the butternut squash. And May is also the time to plant courgettes. We're growing at least three different varieties. Uh, the ones that I can remember is a gold rush, which is a yellow variety. Uh, Genovese, which is a paler green, but it is green. And um, a De Niro one, which is a, a very dark one. Uh, no doubt by the end of the May I will also have sown some patty pan which look like little flying saucers. Uh, they come in white and I think there's a yellow variety as well. And in the same family uh, you can also start melons now. All of these seeds will start with a, a large rounded seed leaf and then after that they'll produce their true leaves. And one last thing to sow this month, uh, don't forget to sow some flowers. Uh, I'm growing a, a really pretty pink nasturtium. I've never seen a pink nasturtium before. Uh, I'm really excited about seeing it. Uh, and I grow uh, things like nasturtiums and marigolds so that I can add the petals uh, to salads. It makes them look really pretty. They're completely edible. If you're sowing flowers for eating, be sure to do your research and just check that what you're about to eat uh, is safe to do so. Don't forget to keep an eye on the weather forecast and if frosts are predicted, make sure that you protect your plants. But May is also the time to start hardening off some of the plants that you have grown earlier in the year. And hardening off is the process where you get plants used to being outside to slightly cooler temperatures, to more wind being around them. 
So you take them out of uh, wherever you're starting off, whether that's a polytunnel, a greenhouse, a cold frame, your kitchen windowsill, wherever it is, you take them out and put them outside during the day and then you take them back in at night so they don't get too cold overnight. And you do that for a few days up to maybe a week and then they'll be hardened off enough to put outside. Just make sure you don't plant them out too early for the area that you live in uh, while there's still a risk of frost. I hope you found this quick guide to what to sow in May useful. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up or leave a comment. But best of all, uh, let YouTube know that you're enjoying my channel uh, by watching another video. Try this one. And so, wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for the day, I hope it's a good one. And I also hope you'll join me again next time.